Yo, 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 what's up, Sooner fans? This is your host from the Prairie, back on the Prairie, Jeremiah Hall, formerly number 27 on the field, but always number one in your hearts. Here with me today, you know who it is, my right-hand man, number nine on the field, our captain and fearless leader, the Braden Weight Room Willie Willis. And this is the podcast on the prairie. Braden. Yo. What's up, my guy? Nothing much, man. Just chilling. Good week so far. Yes, sir. No complaints. That's good. That's good. Anything yeah, uh thanks. anything this week um out of the ordinary? Or what's the uh, what's the car update? The people want to know. Uh no car update right now. I just chilling oh. in the rental, man. <laughs> just chilling in the Still in the, in the uh still in the the hoopty. Nah, it's not a hoopty. It's a Ford Escape. It's a nice car, you know. Just Oh yeah, that is right. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice car. I ain't complaining. As a tight end and a fullback, a big part of our job on the field is protecting others. We have our moments, but most of the time we're doing the gritty work behind the scenes to help our teammates shine. That sounds just like our friends at Plainview Legal Group. Haley and Travis Dennis are longtime property attorney experts who will work tirelessly for their clients. They fight hard and handle the nitty gritty of your property issues so you can focus on life's other issues. When you use Plainview Legal, you are working with diehard Sooners. Haley and Travis have five degrees from the university and Haley has even taught at OU's law school. So whether you're being contacted by Oklahoma Turnpike Authority about acquiring your land or dealing with any other property issues, we highly encourage you to set up a free consultation with Plainview Legal Group. You can go to their website at www.plainviewlegal.com. Give them a call at 405-310-0183 or email them at info at plainviewlegal.com. We're incredibly grateful for Plainview Legal for the support they give the show, so please check them out. Please see the show notes of this episode for important disclaimer information. Anything fun going on this week? Any dinners, dates? Uh, dates? I, I don't know, bro. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Oh, by the yeah. way, people thought I was reckless for uh, talking about old girl um, on the other pod we had. <laughs> Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, hey, you might her and people. her friend, what'd you say? Jay Hall tried to, for everybody that doesn't know, Jay Hall be trying to put me on and be trying to put me on with his little friends or whatever. Bro, And I'll be on. like, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be Kevin. Don't be Kevin. See, uh, what he tried to do, he tried to get me in trouble. Like, I'm just out here shooting at these women. No, 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 no. He tried to put me on them. Okay, now that you've had your little moment or whatever, saying. she hit me up, okay? Well, her friend hit me up and was just like, yo, like, what's up with your friend? I'm like, I don't know. You want to find <laughs> out? And then I, I just passed the information along, okay? Like, <laughs> these women are scared of you for some reason. I don't know. Scared of me? I guess. I don't know, bro. <laughs> it's like our whole life is on the podcast, so I don't know how scary we can get. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know why you're scared of me. Like, I think I'm a great guy. I think so, too. I think you're I think you're a 10 out of 10, bro. <laughs> or maybe like a nine and a half because nobody's perfect. But yeah, OK, I, fair. I fair. give you a lot of credit. I appreciate it. I mean, I don't know, man. I, maybe it's I don't know. I don't the know. Beard? I know. I know her friend listens to the podcast, so I know I'm probably going to catch some more heat off of that. But um, <sighs> anyways. I'm glad life is good. I'm glad. I went to um I went to Swaley's last night down here in Armour. And uh do you know what Swaley's is? Heard of it before, but I'm not I haven't been there before. Bro, yeah, it's a it's there. it's a chained barbecue place and it's actually really, really good. You know, mm -hmm. you know how like you go to like fast food or, or I mean it's not a fast food place, but you know how chain places are, they're everywhere. Right. So like they're normally good, but like it's just like, you know, like it's just good. But right. This place, I had their burnt ends, bro, and oh my god, like I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing it right. So I will be back. Uh, this they don't even sponsor the pod, and I'm giving them a shout out. So uh, shout out to the manager whose name I forget, <laughs> but he's a nice guy, 
and they did wow. us they did us well. So uh shout out to Swaley's. Um let's see. What else is there? I I'm in a good mood, bro. I've had a good week. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah. Uh, I spend most of my time now on my laptop, so I'm wearing my uh blue light glasses a little bit more often now, so I don't go blind like my mom and my dad. My neither of my parents can see now. Like it's gradually happened over the past like five years, but they're going blind, so I'm like, let me try and prevent that as much as possible. No mm. doubt. My mom has some pair too. Yeah. Hopefully I look pretty do I look okay? I don't look weird, do I? You look, you look good at him. You look good at him if I just <laughs> say so myself. Square glasses for a round head. That goes together. <laughs> it could be, it's like the little contrast, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that works out. Um but yeah, I spend a lot of my time on my laptop. Um uh I'm always calling people, networking and uh stuff like that. Um I talked about I think I talked about what I was interested in a couple of pods ago, but somebody told mm -hmm. me I should um elaborate a little bit more. So uh we're just real quick guys. Uh I'm interested in like investment banking, trading, uh hedge funds type of deal, right? So uh I think last time I mentioned um I trade gold. So uh I do that in the mornings and then uh I think a couple pods ago this guy asked me for they they asked us for advice on what they should do about going back to school or whatever. And I said, send out a hundred emails. And so basically what I spend my afternoons doing is calling people. I'm like, Hey, like, this is what I'm interested in. You know, I don't want to commit to anything long term because of football, I could get a call any Sunday or Saturday or whatever the case may be. And a team may, may want me. So I'm just like, um, what can I learn from you? What do you know? Do you like what you do? Um, so, so far I've talked to people that, um, Morgan Stanley, RBC, uh, Edward Jones. Um, I got an event going on in Dallas in like a week if I'm still around that I'll go to for, uh, I think it's JP Morgan or uh, I, I don't know, but I'm always calling and talking to people. So um, that's what I'm doing, guys. Um, I got some free game about that that I'll, that, that I'll talk about later on in the podcast, by the way. Um, I've had some some uh different experience about the people that i talk to but uh that's what i do so if you listen to the pod and you're involved in finance in any way then uh jay hall may end up calling you while he has some free time so uh that's what i do um brayden anything going on for tc as a matter of fact Let's not forget upset pick of the week around the world in college football. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a pick this week? I'm going to go. I'm going to go my, my heart. My heart wants to say Arkansas, Alabama, but my mind knows better. <laughs> okay. So my mind is telling me no. Let's let's keep that on like the edge of an upset. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, you know, I feel that. You know, because just 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 by when Bama played Texas, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't look like the typical Bama, right? And Arkansas is a better team. I think Arkansas is a pretty good team. And hey, you never know. But like I said, you can't really bet against Bama all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't. Yeah. I can't like say that Bama's going to look the same. Like this is a, still a Nick Saban team. So yeah, but my definitive answer is probably let's go Mississippi State over A and M. Oh, that's a good. I was just about to say Mississippi yeah. State and A M. Yeah, that's a close <laughs> one. You're going with uh, Hale State. I'm going with Hale State. Hale State, it is. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Texas A and M is always doing stuff. I'm looking through the list now. Actually, I forgot to look before we got on the podcast. Um, there are some close games. Who we got? Maybe North Carolina Iowa State over playing Michigan. Clemson. Iowa, yeah, that's gonna, yeah, that's Iowa gonna be my, Michigan. Yeah, I'm picking that one. I was going between that one or Oklahoma State and Baylor because Oklahoma State is nine, Baylor sixteen. The odds are with uh, the odds are with Baylor though. The odds are saying. 
that Baylor's going to win. Hey, Brayden, what's your first memory from your time playing sports as a kid? Uh, man, you know, one memory comes to mind about when I was playing football and, you know, youth football. It was a snowy day for some reason in Texas, and I think I had got banged up. And I told my mom, I came over to the sideline, I was like, Mom, I'm hurt. And my mom looked down at me, she's like, are you, are you injured or are you hurt? And then I was like, eh. And then she was like, well, if you're injured, then I understand. But if you're hurt and you sit out this game, you're going to be real disappointed if your team loses. And so then I went back in the game. We ended up winning. So that that's one time that sticks out to me. Anon Sports is providing these memories for kids throughout the state of Oklahoma. If you're a parent and looking to sign your kid up for youth sports, look no further than I-9 Sports. We highly encourage you to consider signing up your kid for flag football, but they also have basketball, volleyball, baseball, and soccer. Ages vary from 3 to 14 years old. And here's a perk for you parents. Practices and games are on the same day, so it's a one-day-a-week commitment, and leagues last for seven weeks. They have locations in the Edmond, OKC area, Yukon, Moore, and Norman. So check them out by going to i9sports.com or call 405-225-7048. Uh, let's talk about our game this week or your game, but I'm, I'm a sooner, so I'm going to say I. Our. <laughs> um, how's TCU looking? We know we got the – they have a new head coach. Um, shoot, what is his name? Sonny Dykes. Yeah. Yep. Um. Let's let's talk about him real quick first. So just so you guys know, uh, Sonny has been all over the place in the world of football. He was drafted seventh round pick, uh, I think, to the Bears. No, Broncos. He was drafted to the Broncos, and then he's, you know, he was had a short stint in the NFL. Uh, coached at Kentucky, Texas Tech, Arizona, Louisiana Tech, California. Uh, was previously at SMU from 2017 until this past year. And then uh, got to TCU this year. So, um, heck of a journeyman. I'm sitting here looking at his contracts, and this man has uh, been paid over the years. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what I would do to just skip to be a head coach. But um, yeah. let's talk about practice. How's practice been? Practice was good, man. Monday was pretty good. Tuesday was really good. We're flying around, you know, locked in, detailed. Uh, game plan looks good. Uh, you know, speaking about TCU a little bit, they are a uh, typical TCU team. Fast, explosive, you know, explosive on offense. Got big receivers that can run. That's the speed on offense. Uh, got a quarterback, Max Dugan. We played him before Dugan or Duggan. Sorry if I butchered your name. But uh, he can run. He's He leads the country in uh, – uh, completions percentage, I think, like with 77% or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he's pretty efficient. On defense, they run the three safety stuff. Again, we'll be facing that. Um, the bandit stuff. And um, uh, really, you know, TCU is always pretty disciplined and they play well on defense. So it'll be a nice, it'll be a nice challenge for us and a nice game for us to kind of get our bearings about ourselves again. I feel like teams, especially in the Big 12, has switched to the 3-3-5 just to beat OU. Like, yeah. after we lost to Iowa State at home in 2017, that's what they ran, 3-3-5. I believe they were one of the first teams to do it. Mm -hmm. After that game, it's just been increasing in usage more and more, and it's even gotten into the NFL a little bit, I've noticed. But uh, that 3-3-5 is, is, is not – I'm not going to say it's not fun to play against, but, like, it definitely makes things challenging just because uh, you know, there's so much going on. Yeah, it is. But, you know, over the time that we played it a couple of times, the good thing about a lot of people running it is we played it multiple times and we know it works versus it, right? So yeah, I think our game plan will be solid against it, even though they do play a lot of 3-3-5. Three, three, so typically when you – play that coverage, you play like a 35 double cloud or a uh, five cover five or, you know, 44 mm -hmm. or something like that, 26. But typically they'll play like they'll either play cover one out of it or they'll play a 35 double cloud. And so we'll have some opportunities to win 
uh, one-on-one man matchups because they do run a lot of man. They run a lot of 17. So yeah. uh, Let's talk about that three three five a little bit more because I know some of our fans are probably like, what what is he talking about? Double cloud? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what what does that mean? <laughs> right, right. So the 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 great thing about that defense, I guess, if you're running it, is that you can the great thing is that against tipple offenses, it's easy to line up in because everybody lines up the exact same no matter like what is going on, no matter what formation. Now they can bump. So like if we are like, you know, if we like are in, you know, three trips, Trey, whatever you want to call it to the field or whatever, you can bump mm-hmm. or whatever. But typically their guys are in the same vicinity of areas. So it's real easy to line up to in terms of uh, tempo. And then off of that, you know, you just, they could spin it to any different variety of coverages. So the 35 double, double cloud is probably their favorite. And then, um, cover one off of it, which is actually unusual because usually if you're running that three safety look, you're not really running too much of cover one, but they run a lot of cover one to bring the safeties down to about eight yards. Mm-hmm. Corners are off at around five ish. And, uh, or sometimes they press and, uh, they'll run cover one. So, yeah, we typically didn't see, <laughs> I remember when we had Kyler Murray, we never saw man or cover one really because that left Kyler free to just run all over the field. And so what that, what you do with the, that three, three, five, the, the fifth man, the robber, you can get to so many different things uh, right. using that player, man. You could, like you said, you can go double cloud. You can have um, um an extra safety in the back. You could play, you could um, Tampa keep the corners two. pressed. Yeah, you could Tampa yeah, two. You can play the, so much stuff. Yeah, like I'm, the list goes on and on. You know, you can bring them down into the box. You can blitz them. You, you can have them spin them into QB. a three. Yeah, three yeah. week blitz. Yeah. You know, whatever. So basically, it turns into Sooner Nation. It, it turns into um, what Deshaun does at the Cheetah, except put him in the middle of the field and let him do whatever. You yeah, know, like 10 yards. Position. Yeah, at, sitting at 10, 10. 12, 10 to 12 yards. Mm-hmm. Somewhat like a – somebody – you have to have a special type of player there, somebody who can uh, play the nickel, somebody who can come down and play linebacker, somebody who can um, play a little bit of safety. Typical, you want that that uh, that bandit, that robber player, whatever you want to call him, to be able to come downhill and keep everything in front of him, which is why you have right. a play at 10. So um, it makes things challenging from an offensive offensive perspective. Uh, what I always found worked against them um, back in Lincoln's offense was play action and um, having a lead back. So two uh, two um, two running back backfield um, misdirections off of that, um, and uh, shoot, what was I about to say? A good example would be the Iowa State game at Iowa State. I think uh, the one we lost, what, last year? Iowa yeah. State? Yeah, Iowa State. Or was it two years ago? Two years ago, 2020. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we ran a lot of play action and uh, two-back stuff. I remember specifically that game. We lost, but you can see, um, if you ever want to go back and watch film on it, you can see what, what plays work and which ones don't. But moving on to more about TCU, um, you know, Braden, you're from Fort Worth. So uh, for the new people who listened to the pod, I know we talked about it last year, but um, why don't you like TCU? Well, what's, what's up with that? Braden, our next sponsor comes with perfect timing. As you know, I'm in Ardmore right now, and I'm always looking for incredible places to eat. Well, it just so happens that our newest sponsors, Ted's Tacos and Cantina, is promoting their restaurant right here in Ardmore. Man, that's great timing. I know you love Mexican food, and I do too. And I have sources telling me that they're going to hook you up for a free meal when you go in. Hey, talk to me. I love to (laughs) hear it. You know what else I love to hear? Ted's Tacos and Cantina offers daily. That's right. 
daily happy hour specials and weekly Taco Tuesday deals. This is a haven for classic and novelty Mexican eats and is the perfect spot to stop for lunch on your way to the Red River Showdown here in a couple weeks. For loaded fries to enchiladas, there's something for everyone. They're located right off I-35, exit 32. To learn more, visit tedstacoscantina.com. That is Ted's, T-E-D-S, tacocatina.com. I'm going to cash in on their generous offer for a free meal and report back. But I'm telling you, I already know the food is incredible. I'm sure you're going to love it. Remember, y'all, that's Ted's Taco and Cantina, an Oklahoma company. Yeah, you know, so for the people that are new, uh, basically, I was in TCU's backyard. Then they never recruited me. And then after I signed to OU, they kind of wanted to act like they did kind of recruit me. Like, they're like, oh, man, we wish we could have. I, I remember vividly. I'm not going to say their names. But I remember vividly one of the coaches was at a spring practice. Uh, this is after I was done. So I was just up there working out and then helping with the coaching during spring practice. And he came up to me, and there was another coach that had also offered me that was from the area. He was mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> he was uh, the he was a real cool guy. I forgot his name, but uh, he was a coach at uh, Illinois, and uh, he was like we were talking, and then the TCU coach came over there, and he was like, "Oh man," he's like, "You know, I wish we could have got you, you know, down the down the TCU, man. We we really tried, da da da." And I was thinking to myself, I was like, "No." Yeah, I did not. <laughs> it's cool, though. It's it's perfectly fine. But, yeah, you know, and then, you know, it's just going back home and just everything like that. So, you know, it, it means a little bit more. But at the end of the day, this year, even more so than other years, I'm not really focused on that because I'm more so focused on what we can do as a team to get better. And, mm-hmm. you know, the next game is the biggest game only because it's the next game. So, right. um you know, not going to put my self agendas above the team. And I'm just focused on doing what we can do to get better and go out there and uh, get away and put us on the right track. All right. Well, you, you can say that I'm going to say, I hope you ball out and put a four touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, bro. I feel like that happens way more than what people may think. You know, a lot of these schools, if you're from <laughs> that same go, state, so let's you know, just say like, All right, go uh, ahead, go you're, you're from it. Norman <laughs> and, like, yeah, um, you know, Oklahoma offers you late. You know, Oklahoma doesn't look at you. You know, that happened to Charlie Kolar. You know, it happened to you. It happened to me. I don't, I don't know what it is with the schools that are in your home state that think just because you're in your home, like you're, you're, you're from that state means that they're going to commit to you and they can just like wait because the same thing happened to me in north carolina i like right. i went i went to their training camp after my eighth grade year and they didn't offer me until my senior year and by then i had like 30 plus offers already had committed i'm like and i remember telling the coach he was like yeah, yeah i wish we could have got you and i was like no you don't don't lie to me like this is right before i had left this is like two weeks before i left the ou i was already committed signed the paperwork and everything i was like bro don't need, I, I, I almost wanted to curse him out like, don't lie. Like, you had your chance. Right. Go go tell your head coach. He messed up. And uh, y'all, we can uh, talk about it if you guys make it to a bowl game. Like, I said that. I was like, if y'all make it to a bowl game. <laughs> so, I, I was like, yo, like, you're you're playing with people. Like, stop doing that. So, right. Uh, I believe Alex has a, a scenario for his problems on the prairie. Alex? Well, what we got this this week? I'm a mom with two young boys, four years old and one year old. I'm needing advice on how to foster a great mother son relationship with them both. What are some things you remember your mom's doing that helped build a strong relationship with you as you aged? I'm worried they won't want anything to do with mom as they get older. <laughs> mm. Well, I'll tell you the quick, fast, and easy one is food. Feed me and I will be happy. <laughs> That's always a, a simple good one. I always look forward to the different things my mom would cook. You know, she would uh, go out of her way to come up with different things. And I uh, really make sure that dinner time was one where not only I got a chance to eat and be happy, but uh, she could sit down and, and, and have me in one place, me and my sister, and just talk to us. You know, my mom always made sure that 
Uh, we always put our phones away. We, um, you know, sometimes we turned on the TV, sometimes we wouldn't. It just depends on what was going on. But um, that time just to sit and, and and bond with your kids is is important. You know, I think that's just one simple thing you can do. You know, every family, I would hope, does it. But, um, right, yeah, I'll come up with another one. But, Brayden, what you got? Um, so, my me and my mom's relationship is special. You know what I'm saying? And it's shaped – kind of not only by circumstance, but it's kind of shaped by circumstance, you know, for the longest time, it just was me and my mother, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's why we're so close for a little bit of the reason, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, all that's, you know, all we had, all we needed. Um, but as you know, I got older, like you said, I think making time for them and bonding with them, we did this thing, uh, my whole family, not, you know, my, mom my dad uh little sister everything when we got when we came home and we ate dinner we didn't eat dinner in separate places or like in the living room we made a concerted effort to all go to the kitchen table you know what i'm saying and we eat together and we do this thing called roses and thorns you know what i'm saying your roses were the positive things that went on during your day and then your thorns was one bad thing that went on in your day and so then you know you get the chance to kind of get a look into how your kid's day was. And, you know what I'm saying? Even if it was something small, you know what I'm saying? Like in, during school, you might define your kid's day by, you know, what do they do now? Binder signs or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Whatever they do nowadays, you know, to report that your kid may have not have had the best day in school. But, you know, something else might have happened to them that, you know, was actually, you know, like impactful and on their day in a good or a bad way. And you would never know if you never sat down and asked them about it, you know? So I think that's the best way is to sit up there and just, you know, make a concerted effort to bond with your kids and learn what's going on through their day. You know what I'm saying? I think the kid would appreciate that, especially as they get older, you know, yeah. some stuff that, as you get older and there's some times that kids feel like they can't talk to their parents and that shouldn't be the case. You know what I'm saying? You should always feel like you can talk to your parents. If you start that young, they're going to always feel like they can talk to you. So, yeah. One thing I will say my mom does a great job of doing is listening to my ideas. You know, I often have big ideas and <laughs> stuff that I want to do and, you know, stuff that sometimes doesn't even seem realistic, but Till this day, even when I come home, my mom always listens. She never critiques me. Like she never says, oh, that's a bad idea. Or, well, she'll, she'll, she'll let me know if something's a bad idea, but she'll always hear me out, you know, rather than right. saying yes or no, or I'm right or my wrong. She'll say, what about this? Have you thought of this? Um, let's look at this. You should do this. And instead of being a brick wall, she's more so like a soundboard for me to just express myself, you know, sometimes I don't even need a conclusion. Sometimes I just want somebody to talk to and, and hear what I have going on. So, um, I'd say those are two big things. You see, we both talked about food, but that second one that I touched on, um, just, just being a soundboard for your kids, you know, if they want to say they're Superman, let them be Superman, but make sure they don't go kill them, kill themselves, you know? So, <laughs> um, that's one thing I can say. So, um, I, I, I don't know what it's like to be a parent. I don't want to find out anytime soon, but, right. <laughs> um, that's all from my perspective. So, uh, good luck with those kids. <laughs> you got this. Yeah, you got it. Um, one more thing, ladies and gentlemen, before we wrap this up, uh, I, I got a small free game segment to throw out there. And this is from all the phone calls I've made over the past two weeks or so, I think I've gotten in contact with like 15 plus people. Right. And, you know, for the most part, I, I'll, I'll tell them my ideas and what I think. And, you know, they'll, they'll tell me their experience and where they can see me working or add to what I think I want to do. And, um, for the first time earlier this week, I had somebody, uh, tell me the negatives of my ideas, which was cool. But 
it was kind of the way the conversation went. And I'm used to taking criticism, but this is the first time I'm taking criticism outside the area of football, for real. You know, something that I'm truly interested in. And uh, the topic is choose your heart. Okay. So when I was talking to this guy, he was telling me how, like, running a hedge fund is hard. And he didn't really go into detail as to why. He was just like, you know, it's a lot of paperwork. Nothing's guaranteed. Da, 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 da. And I'm just like, bro, like you're not giving me substance. Like I, I I need to know more than that. You know, for you to just tell me that it's hard, like life is hard. You know, uh, John 16, 33 says, um, in him, you may have peace in this world. You may, you will have trouble, but take heart. He has overcome the world. You know, that's Jesus talking to his uh, disciples before he goes and dies on the cross. He says, in this world, you will have trouble. So life is hard. You know, a, a nine to five is hard. Uh, running a hedge fund is hard. Playing football at Oklahoma is hard, you know, but that shouldn't deter someone away from pursuing a dream, you know, just because I'm competing with Harvard and, and Princeton guys out there, that doesn't mean I'm scared to compete. You know, I, I went and played Bama. I went and played you know, we, we played all these teams, you know, I went to freaking true. Oklahoma. I got my yeah. NBA, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm used to competing. Let me go compete. Let me go fail. And, uh, then we can run it back. I'll get back up and we'll run the next play. You know, I'll do it again next month or whatever the case may be. So if J hall ends up calling you about your job, don't tell me that it's hard. Tell me what I can do to overcome adversity and a little bit, uh, te teach me, teach me something. I, I, I'm looking for knowledge. So, uh, don't tell me that something's hard. Yes, I know. Be realistic, but um, I'm a very uh glass half full type of person. So, um, yeah, that that was my spiel for today, guys. Alex, Braden, <laughs> like it. You like it. I like. Well, it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have for this episode on the podcast. Braden, do you have anything for the people? I don't see y'all, see y'all, well, I guess we won't see y'all Saturday because we'll be in Fort Worth, but uh, we'll fill y'all from the, from the, uh, from the yeah. TV sets, I guess. <laughs> I need, I need three bows on Saturday. I, I won't be there, but. I'm I got to mix it up. I'll have to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Yeah,